Hi students, welcome to the channel. So in this video, we are very quickly going to talk about uh, one of the experimental techniques which we talk about in the chapter of liquids and solutions. Or this method ka naam hai. The name of the method is Ostwald Walker method. So basically, guys, Ostwald Walker method is used in case of relative lowering of vapor pressure, which is a topic which uh, we have already studied, and it is used for experimental determination of delta P by P naught. Remember, delta P by P naught is relative lowering in vapor pressure, and delta P by P S. So using the Ostwald Walker method, we can determine uh, these two quantities experimentally. Okay. So what goes on over here? Let's very quickly try to understand. So this is a, a rough setup of the Ostwald Walker method. So initially over here we have taken a particular solution. These are the containers which contain your solution. Over here we have taken the containers which have the pure solvent, and over here we have taken a dehydrating agent. Uh, let us say calcium chloride, and they are all connected through tubes like this. You can have a look. They are all connected through tubes, and now. From this end, we pass dry air into this entire setup. Okay, so now let us try to understand what happens in case of Ostwald Walker method. So basically, what happens here is that once we pass the dry air through these containers in which we have the solution. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we have the same solution everywhere. Okay, so basically, we over the solution container the pressure over the solution container will be equals to ps we all know this so over here the pressure is going to be ps okay now as the dry air will come from this end what is going to happen is that there will be diffusion the gas will collect some moisture all right and once it is coming out from this end then it won't be dry anymore it will be saturated with water vapor and saturated at a pressure of ps okay so basically initially the air was dry but once it passes through the container containing the solution where the pressure is ps that is the vapor pressure of the solution so now what will happen is that this gas will collect moisture within it okay and after it is coming out then it will be saturated at a pressure of ps and just to ensure that before it passes out of the solution containers i want to be sure that it has been completely saturated so that is why i pass it not through one but maybe three solution containers okay so these are all containers having the same solution and i am passing dry air so this ensures uh, by doing it uh, by doing this process multiple times this ensures that by the time the gas reaches over here it is completely saturated now at a pressure of ps so basically the gas has collected moisture within itself and now it is saturated at a pressure of ps all right acha because of this uh, in the solution set of containers there will there will be some loss in mass because moisture has been taken away from those containers so obviously there is going to be some loss in mass so i can say guys that this loss in mass loss in mass of all the containers the total loss in mass of all the containers which are containing the solution so sometimes we also represent it as loss in mass of solution set containers okay so this means all the containers which are basically having the same solution so loss in mass of solution set containers will be proportional to ps okay so this will be proportional to ps all right so now this air which is now moving further it is not dry anymore this is saturated at a pressure of ps okay so it is saturated with water vapor saturated at this is at at ps now after getting saturated at ps we make this gas pass through the solvent we make this gas pass through the containers having the solvent so let me draw just one more figure for the solvent container over here so this is the basically the opening and this is the outlet inlet and outlet over here i have the pure solvent right this is pure solvent now and needless to say that the pressure over the pure solvent will be more than the pressure over the solution because we know this from rlbp 
so basically this will be having a pressure of p not this will be having a pressure of p not all right acha now air is coming from here and this air is not dry anymore this is saturated at ps so we know that it already contains moisture and it is saturated at ps but once the air reaches this solvent set of container <clears throat> then what is going to happen once it reaches over here this gas finds out that here the pressure of moisture is even more okay it was containing pressure at ps okay and this pressure is p not so we know that p not is greater than ps so what will happen there will be further diffusion in that air it will collect more moisture within itself as it is passing out of the container and once it reaches over here then it will be saturated at p not okay so once it passes out out of the solvent set of containers the pressure of moisture within this air will not be it because here the pressure is more so it will be collecting more moisture within itself and now it will be saturated at p not all right so basically just to ensure this saturation again we are doing the same thing that we are making it pass through not one but uh, two three containers just to ensure that this saturation is complete okay so we are making it pass through two three containers which have the same solvent so by the time this air passes out from here to here and reaches till here it is now saturated with water vapor saturated with water vapor at a pressure of p not fair and simple so again my dear boys and girls what is going to happen over here is that there will be a further loss in mass even in the solvent set of containers so your solvent set of containers will again go a loss in mass and now the loss in mass okay and this is very important the loss in mass of solvent set containers which means all the containers having the solvent which is basically the same solvent so loss in mass of solvent set containers will be proportional to see this was already saturated at ps and now once it enters it finds that the vapor pressure is p not which is more than ps so it will be collecting moisture only corresponding to that difference <clears throat> between p not and ps so loss in mass of solvent set containers will be proportional to p not minus ps the extra pressure which is in the uh, solvent containers so which is basically nothing but your delta p which is nothing but your delta p okay and now this gas is air is saturated at p not uh, and now it starts traveling further it will reach into the dehydrating agent which is usually calcium chloride now what is the purpose of this calcium chloride the purpose of this calcium chloride is just to absorb moisture and you can see that we have taken lots and lots of calcium chloride over here so basically as the gas passes through this all right so this calcium chloride starts absorbing the moisture so gas starts losing the moisture calcium chloride is absorbing it finally after a decent enough long enough passage of cacl2 finally after it reaches over here it has again lost all the moisture and it is again dry air <clears throat> this has become again dry air okay so this was saturated at p not and calcium chloride absorbs all the moisture present in it so because of that the calcium chloride is going to gain some mass all right and that gain in mass my dear students that gain in mass of gain in mass of cacl2 or the dehydrating agent will be directly proportional to p not so that summarizes your post wall walker method so basically if you are solving a problem you will be given these three quantities loss in mass of solution loss in mass of solvent and gain in mass of the dehydrating agent which is usually calcium chloride so if all these quantities are given then i can definitely say that loss in mass of solvent loss in mass of solvent problems are very very direct if you just know these basic logics loss in mass of solvent set containers upon loss in mass of solution if these quantities are given to me loss in mass of solution uh, this my dear boys and girls will be <coughs> equals to delta p upon ps so if these two are given i can experimentally de determine the value of delta p by ps and similarly loss in mass of solvent loss in mass of solvent upon upon the gain in mass the gain in mass of dehydrating agent which happens to be cacl2 will be equals to delta p delta p upon p not delta p upon p not so again if these two quantities are known i can experimentally determine the value of delta p by p not 
so as i told you earlier this method is used to experimental uh, is used for the experimental determination of delta p by p not and delta p by ps fairly simple the problems are very simple you will just be given the data you need to put the data in the formula and that is how you can calculate your answers so that's it for today i'll see you again in the next video thank you so much and wish you all the best thank you so much